Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Craig. The day is here. It has arrived. It is Christmas morning, and we have a Supreme Court nominee. Mr. Uh, Neil Gorsuch uh, has been uh, President Trump's nominee to the Supreme Court. Uh, would love to go into some details about him, but I want to take a little bit of time. I want to let all the pundits kind of chime in so we can kind of bring that information together. Later, FPC will be releasing a statement talking about uh, Mr. Gorsuch and our feelings on him, but I, I got to imagine it's going to be pretty good. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about a particular item, a bill that's taking place in Oregon. Now, normally, this is not the place where I'm going to do like, you know, bill updates and breakdowns and stuff like that, but this is one that is so outrageous that I knew that you folks all over the country are, are going to want to hear about this because let's be honest, stupidity is contagious. And quite frankly, if this is something that has any hope of passing in the state of Oregon, you know it's going to be introduced in other states. So they already have this idea, this concept of gun violence restraining orders. The idea that if someone who is close to you uh, believes that you may be uh, a danger to yourself or others, that they can go to law, that they can go to the courts and get a restraining order uh, to basically have your firearms taken away from you and have you lose your Second Amendment rights. Well, this bill goes even further in, in, in that what it says is, is that if uh, someone who is close to you, uh, uh, someone who is, uh, you know, a, a family member, a roommate, in-law, blood relative, sexual partner, uh, somebody who's close to you believes that uh, you are a danger to yourself or others, they can take your firearm and drop it off at a dealer and uh, never tell you about it. And the dealer uh, is authorized to take that firearm and hold on to it. Now, interestingly, in the bill, there is nothing in the bill that provides any sort of uh, criminal liability for those who falsely take a firearm from the individual. There's nothing in the bill that uh, that there's nothing in the bill that requires the uh, the gun store owner, or the FFL, to actually tell you that they have your firearm. Absolutely nothing. Now, basic, so basically what this bill does is, is that it opens up the door to legal gun theft. Basically, legal gun theft of a legally owned and purchased firearm. Now, I, I don't know about you, but if, if you don't find that outrageous, I mean, I want you to think about this. Think about any roommate you've, ever, you've had that didn't like you and knew you owned a firearm. Think about uh, an ex-girlfriend or an ex-boyfriend, maybe, that didn't like you and knew you owned a firearm. Think about a family member who just doesn't like the idea of you having a firearm. Think about all of those possibilities and realize that in, in Oregon, should this become law, any one of them would be able to take your guns, drop them off at any dealer, no matter how close or how far, and you wouldn't even know that they, you wouldn't even know where they were. They have no obligation to tell you where they are. And the, the dealer doesn't have any obligation to tell you where they are. So what do you think about that? So just when you think that, uh, that, the, that the gun grabbers have gone off the rails, you start to realize that they've gone even further. So anyway, so folks, let's see what you have to say about this particular idea. How many of you would like to see your firearms potentially taken away by individuals who may or may not know you or may or may not like you or believe in your right to keep and bear arms? Uh, JJ asks, so is the person grabbing your firearm committing a crime for handling a gun that is not registered to that person? New law. Uh, do not know that in the state. Do not know that in the state of Oregon. Uh, but evidently, the law will allow them to do so. That's what it sounds like. Um, Christopher, <laughs> Christopher Columbus, you must have discovered America. Uh, that's crazy. I haven't heard this yet. Uh, can you the best went good pick? I okay. I don't know what you're asking there. Uh, let's see here. Legalized theft. Uh, just like taxes. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Neil Gorsuch, time, uh, time to stop this nonsense. Uh, yes, it is, in fact, time to actually hurry up and get him, get him uh, appointed. Uh, the interesting thing is, is that uh, the, uh, the minority party in Congress or in the Senate uh, doesn't seem to be cooperating. In fact, today, uh, Orrin Hatch had to uh, suspend committee rules because for the second day in a row, 
uh, Democrats didn't show up to vote on nominees, so they suspended the rules and actually just voted on the nominees. Uh, they're basically just the minority party. So I'm hoping that those folks who didn't bother to show up aren't getting paid their per diem for today. Just saying. Ah, this is fun. This is funny one and won't happen, Dom Dominique. You know, Dominique James, or I don't know if it's Dominique or Dominic. But you know, I guess here's the thing: is that I, I would love to say that this is crazy and won't happen. But the fact is, is that they'll keep reintroducing ideas like this until eventually it passes. They'll modify a little bit here, there, until eventually it becomes acceptable to enough people that eventually the thing will pass. And that's the important part to understand about this whole movement. They're not stopping. I mean, gun control started way, way back when, when they want, didn't want Native Americans to own firearms, when they didn't want Chinese immigrants to own firearms, when they didn't want uh, uh, freed, freed men freed slaves or, or men who otherwise would have been slaves to own firearms. They've been fighting to disarm uh, uh, law-abiding citizens ever since then. And so it's not going to stop. And the ideas are going to continue to get crazier and crazier. <sighs> it's already law in California, right? No, that is not the law in California. That is not the law currently in California. Uh, beer with Craig, five o'clock somewhere. <sighs> I love that idea. Uh, ben, you go right to the top of my list of favorite people. Hopefully, like, you know, micro brews, no Coors Light or Bud Light. Sorry if you guys like that. Um, uh, got my shirt, going to wear it today. Thank you so much. Uh, Anti-gunners are emotionally triggered without, without reasoning. Uh, could already imagine someone having their home babysat by their mom and, <laughs> and they are... <laughs> okay, yes, I can already imagine someone having their home babysat by their mom and their mom finding out they own a firearm and deciding that she doesn't like that and dropping it off at a gun dealer. Yes, I most definitely could see something like that happening. Folks, I just I want you to understand the absurdity of some of the ideas uh, that we have to fight. The fact that this is, that they would even consider this to be something legitimate uh, lets you know how really out of touch and emotionally driven they are. Facts don't matter. But they matter to us. So it's, that's why it's important that we fight. Anyway, folks, that's it for today's Coffee with Craig. You folks take care, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow morning. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.